Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. My name is Paulo, I am from Portugal, some people ask me that, and today I'm showing you the review of the long-awaited Parker 51, the new version, the version that was released in 2021. This pen had, uh, was scheduled to be released in the third in the last trimester of 2020 but it got delayed so it was released in february 2021 so for this unboxing i have to first of all to thank apple boom for sending me this pen as a loan for review i will leave in the description below the links where you can get this pen if you are interested in it. You can see other previous videos about this pen, like the unboxing and my previous thoughts about it, and now we'll see if my previous thoughts confirm or not about my opinion of this pen. So first of all, let's take a look. It comes inside a box, white cardboard box, that has just the very simple information. It, it says it was made in France and here it has some information about the new Europe and where you can check information in parkerpen.com. The most amazing thing is today that I am recording this review. If you go to Parker pen.com there is no information yet about this new release this is something that i cannot understand this is the release of uh, the re-release of uh, an iconic pen and there is no information in the official site of the brand that's strange the box has this is very sturdy but it has this kind of cardboard feel on the outside it has embossed with gold parker established 1888 and then the, this by appointment to the Queen and the Prince of Wales there. When you open the box, you will see this padded surface that says again, Parker, the logo, Parker established 1888. And you have this pen bed with the pen and these elastic loops where you can put extra pens. You take these out by lifting this little tab and you will find one ink cartridge loose there and a big space that is empty. Now, let's talk about this. I find it very useful to have an extra cartridge or just one cartridge. Oops. It fell on the floor and I kicked the tripod and did very stupid things. Sorry. So the, it has a, a cartridge, black one, which is nice. I prefer black cartridges than blue cartridges, but it's only myself. And we have this very big blank space. One thing I, I think this pen costs 260 euros, this variation for 260 euros. They could have included here a full box of cartridges. It would be nicer than just one, but However, it's nice to have a cartridge, so you buy a pen and you can immediately start writing with it. Otherwise, you would be stuck, now what can I do with it? Unless you have a bottle, an ink bottle or extra cartridges with you. I think it's always nice to offer at least one. And I would think at this price point, it would be more adequate to have a full box. I also think that when you have a pen that is a re-release of an iconic pen and I think some extra information would be nice to be provided. So it is very strange not to have a leaflet here and because this has the typical size of a leaflet, I don't understand why they don't do it. Maybe the early release they missed that, but I don't think it makes any sense. Uh, they could even do... Uh, in fact, do you, do you ever read those booklets? I usually don't, but if you if you are having a re-release of an iconic pen, some historical background about that pen or some other details might be 
interesting and nice and fun to have there. One thing they could have done was to go with some designs of vintage filling instructions and this, this little paper that said how to fill and it had for 61, 65, 51, 45 and they have simple instructions and it, they could do it with this kind of vintage look and advertise their uh, cartridges. I don't know why they didn't do it. It's strange and it's interesting because this they advertise the 51 as a cartridge converter pen. And there was also this one that is also very nice, very simple and says the the, the basic information. I know all we know that, but I think it's always nice to include something here. Now, let's go back to the pen and let's take it out, close the box and put this away. And now, let's take a look at the pen. First thing I have to say about this pen, and I will make a comparison, those versus videos that I make between the two variations, but just for comparison now, I have to say that this pen really has the kind of silhouette that remembers us of the vintage Parker 51. I think there is no doubt about that. So outside it looks like that one. But um, when you look at outside, so you have a metal cap with a arrow shaped clip. This clip throughout the Parker history had many shapes and variations. Even in the original, let's call it like that, the original version or the original release of the Parker 51, there were several versions, several lengths and slightly different designs. And even there was the Blue Diamond one. So we cannot say that it's different from the old. Even the old, they changed it a lot. It has a, a metal jewel on the top of the cap. You have this clip. You have the cap that is made of metal and has a lot of small lines. This is, and it has a band that says there Parker and Friends and then the date code. It is nice and simple. And when you look at this, and if I get my black costume Parker 51, you can see here that the cap has, the lines on this cap are in groups of five that go there and has, and it doesn't have that cap lip. But if we go to this older vacuumatic Parker 51, that has the blue diamond variation, you can see it is quite similar. It also has a smooth uh, cap band with Parker 51 and or Parker at least. And then it has all these lines, not grouped in groups of five, but just the, exactly the same kind of finish you have on this pen. So very similar to the, to the overall design that we expect from a Parker 51. It has a plastic or a resin barrel that is black and shiny. It is also available in other colors like burgundy, teal, plum, which is interesting because they go, they went and grabbed old colors from the old Parker 51. I think in the future they may do, and at least I hope they do, some other colors like cocoa and uh, mustard, and maybe forest green and dove gray. It would be nice if they brought back some of the older colors in the future, but I guess they may do that. It will depend, at least in my opinion, in how well this pen will sell. Now, when you uncap the pen, you will see the biggest difference from this pen to the older Parker 51. And that biggest difference is the way that the cap gets out of the pen. In this one, you have to unscrew. This is a screw fit cap. By the way, this cap takes one turn and a little, not even a quarter, just 
just above one turn to get out of the pen. And when you look at it, now this is the first difference, so you have cap threads. The second difference that you, you'll see from most of older Parker 51s is that it has also a cap, uh, section ring that is quite fat. This is the fattest one on the older Parker 51s, but there were models where there were more thin uh, bands, so this was variable also. And you have a section that is rounded at the end, and you can see the tip of the nib there. And when you look on the underside, you will see the feed, and you can see there there is a F engraved on the feed to say it is a um, fine nib. When you look at an older Parker 51, you will see that opening is much smaller and you see much less of the feed. And if you look at a Parker 21, you will see more that kind of open opening where you can see the feed there. And there are also some other pens that are inspired in this one, like the Aurora 88. And you can see also a bigger opening there. Okay. Let me check my notes and talk a little bit more about this. Um, so these because you have these it's not a metal ring you have the because you have the threads you have a little uh, diameter difference from the barrel to the section and you can see that you may be worried it is too much i don't think so i thought it was much worse when i saw the first pictures of this pen in fact the difference between the width here and there over the ring that is flush to the rest of the section is just from 10 to 11 millimeters so it's not a big difference it's more visible than you can actually feel in your fingers you can feel it but you don't feel it that much the the sorry the barrel unscrews and you can see here inside the metal threads that go into the section and that screw here on the barrel. You also have a converter that comes included at the pen, at least in the pens with the gold nib version. I've seen some videos out there that show that this pen didn't have the that the, the steel nibbed pens don't come with a converter and I think they should come. I think it is a nice thing to give to the user a converter and a cartridge. If you ask me, for me, if this pen was for me, I would, be, I would think it was nice if they provided a converter, but because I'm quite a big collector, I wouldn't mind that much if mine didn't come with a converter because I have lots of converters. I have more converters than pens that I have in use at each time, so I don't need another one, but I think it is some convenient thing. Just to talk about the price, this gold nib version is it costs 90 costs 260 euros and the steel nib version costs 90 euros. So it's much more um, acceptable or not, not to call acceptable, af affordable. Now, I'm just going for a few objective thoughts on this pen. And the first one is that this pen is obviously inspired by the Parker 51, although this one has the threaded cap that I told you about. Now, the cap, the threads are machined 
out of the resin or the plastic and on the cap the threads are on the metal part so you have metal threads on plastic threads and this may be a concern and this, this may be a concern in two ways if you ever used an older Parker 51 you are used to do this so if this pen looks quite a lot like a Parker 51 it is a Parker 51 you grab this pen and you'll do that and the cap will not come out so you may put some extra stress on the threads because it is like instinctive you try to uncap the pen that's not a nice thing to do the other thing is that the metal may wear out the the threads yes there may that's theoretically a problem however i find these threads to be very well machined when you are in cap when you are capping the pen you don't even feel the, the threads at all so uh, it, it's like if they didn't touch each other so maybe that's not a problem but i'm not sure in fact parker we if we choose the, the case of the parker dual fold you have plastic threads inside the cap and plastic threads on the barrel but when you unscrew the, the barrel you have plastic thread plastic inner threads of the barrel and metal threads on the section and i never found this to be a problem however to be honest we don't unscrew the section as many times as we unscrew the cap so only time and long-term reviews will be able to really assess the quality of the threading system on this pen there um, about other things the pen feels very nice on the hand you can hold it very well it's very well balanced i think it's really well made you can post it it posts deeply and securely although it allows for some movement in one way or another you don't need to be afraid of it scratching the barrel because what touches the barrel is not the metal part of the cap but the inner cap that is plastic that fits on the plastic barrel so no problem there it is very convenient very nice weighted however when you hold an older parker 51 and i'm not talking about this one the vacuumatic i'm talking about the aerometric you feel it like being a little bit more solid and why is that because the filling system system of the aerometric is a rubber sack that has a metal casing and a bar cannot press because the pen is full of ink that will hold ink inside so this will provide some extra weight to the pen and that kind of difference you may feel but it's not a light pen not a heavy pen it is very very comfortable to use in my opinion about the nib i have to say that this nib is very smooth you will see it working in the the writing uh, test and it is very well tuned and i only find the problem that it is only at least for now it is only available as f and then and i think people mostly nowadays people are looking for some strange nibs strange in my opinion because for me f and m are great even extra fine is good but there's not available but people like broads double broads oblique italic and i think this may be a little failure on the parker side and now let's jump to the next part now i want to address the main controversies about this pen this is something that i already um approached in my video that I made of my preliminary thoughts about this pen. One of these are before the, the listing, of, uh, listing them all, or at least the ones that I remembered of. The first thing is this pen, any other re-release of an older Parker 51, will never be able to please most Parker 51 
users, from the users of the vintage ones, because any new Parker 51 will be like the older Parker 51. And we are talking about the maybe the writing experience, the construction, but we cannot even forget another thing. The Parker 51 was very special because it was released as a very special writing instrument in a time where fountain pens were really important, not just as a hobby, maybe not at all as a hobby, they were a tool, a writing tool, and they still have lots of working issues. I don't think that happens now. Most of the working issues are now solved. So these, any new Parker 51 will be ever as innovative as the older one. That is my opinion. And so, the first thing that I read a lot about this pen is this pen is not the same as the old Parker 51, not even the design. Yes, I agree, and I agree because this is not the old Parker 51. But when we, when we say this is not the old Parker 51, what do you mean? What is the old Parker 51? Is this one that is the vacuumatic and has a blind cap, or the aerometric that doesn't have a blind cap? And this one has a clip with the, the blue diamond, this one has not. And we are talking about gold nibs or the special, or the Park 51 special that didn't have gold nib, or the, the Mi version, or, and also something that happened in the, the special, they had a black jewel on top. There were also vacuumatic pens with double jewels. So, with so many, with so much diversity between all these pens, what, which pen is the real Parker 51 design? I'm not sure. So when we say it's not like the old, I want to ask you, how does, how, what is the old pen? And how do you characterize it? And how different between themselves are the old variations of the Parker 51? There was even, let me grab it, a version of the Parker 51 that had a different shape of cap that was more similar to the cap of the Parker 61. It had a barrel that was not rounded at the end and it had a larger section and a thinner ring. So, again, when you say you are dreaming of your old Parker 51, really, how do you characterize your old Parker 51. And I think that is the, the question. We are dreaming about something in our imagination and you want a new thing to meet that, but it will never do it, in my opinion. It has a screw cap instead of a push fit cap. And yes, that is an objective difference from this pen from all the other older models of the Parker 51. And I agree with that. I would prefer that this pen had a push fit cap instead of the the other the, instead of the screw cap. But that's that's what it is. Um, I would prefer that. But maybe Parker has some informations by some studies on their customers and they know that the screw fit cap is more interesting for them than a push fit cap. And I hear lots of times that people don't feel secure enough with pens like the Aurora Duo Card that they say it may be loose. I don't think so. Some people complain also about the older Parker 51, about the Parker 45, and even about the Lamy 2000. I've re read comments of people saying that they would prefer that the Lamy 2000 had a screw fit cap because it feels more secure. So maybe this is really something that the consumers are looking for. Again, I would prefer it to have a push fit cap. It's my favorite feeling system. Uh, closing system. Uh, 
Now about filling system. People say filling system is not the same. Yes and no. Actually it is the same because there were older Parker 51s. I don't have any, but there were older Parker 51s with cartridge and converters. So the filling system, yes, is the same. And no, it is not the same because it has never been the same for all the Parker 51s that were origi originally released because they were button fillers, vacuumatic, aerometric and cartridge converters. So they have four filling systems. If you ask me if this filling system makes sense, yes, it does. Because from the Parker 45 onwards, they only made pens that were cartridge converter pens. So it is kind of an evolution. They had vacuumatic and they dropped the vacuumatic system that was available in the vacuumatic in some stripe to folds and the Parker 51. The vacuumatic filling was too problematic. They changed it to the aerometric and then they made several changes uh, along the way and now they stopped. Now we are talking about 1960s. They stopped with the cartridge converter. So it makes some kind of sense to do that. Uh, the other question that I hear, um, no, before of that, just I was just checking my notes. I have a, a viewer that told me something that maybe that could make sense. They could have provided instead of this converter to give that vintage feel of a pen to some people. They could have provided a converter like this. This, this is an older Parker converter that was used mostly on the Parker 45s and some other pens and it was very nice. You can see there it says Parker, made in England and it was a squeeze fill converter. These are not very good. They don't take a lot of ink and the, the bladder will get, uh, will die at some point. However, it could be a nice thing. If you wanted, you could have kind of a vintage feel to the, your filling system from the bottle. And then, yes, you could buy additionally the regular converter and cartridges. But this was an idea from a viewer. I don't know if it was advantages to Parker in terms of uh, profit but I think it would be a nice gift, let's call it like that way, for the buyers. Another thing, people say that the Parker 51 is not the same inside the, the shell, the hood the section, that the older one has a very complex system. And yes, it had a complex system. I don't have, um, I will not dismantle any of those Parker 51s, but I have here uh, a Chinese, this is a Vingsung 613, which is a copy of a Parker 51, and you can see it has a collector there with fins, the, the, the nib is tubular and goes into uh, a feed. It has a different feeding system. However, why do people care about feeding systems? Yes, we care about it if we are collectors and we are pen addicts, but are they going for the collectors or are they going for the new users? Original Parker 51 sold millions of pens. If they sold millions of pens, I don't believe that millions of people wanted to know how the feeding system to the, the ink feeding system worked. I don't believe that. They work, they bought the pen because it was good and it wrote well. This one writes well as it is. So, do we really need that? more complicated insert that would get more expensive and maybe would be harder to clean, I don't think we would like that. Of course, some people will say that, as some people will say that uh, a new, uh, I don't know, a new Nikon camera, a new F 610, it's not that new anymore, but it, it's not the D610 is not the same as the Nikon, the Nikon F1, which was very interesting, very 
reliably reliable, very well built, heavy, and so on. No, it's not the same. It is a digital camera. It is another time. Things work differently. So, was that necessary in this pen? No, it was not. Times changed. Now, another question that is related with the ink feeding system is the shape of the nib. This nib is not a tubular nib as it was on the Parker 51. Again, let me show here on this Wing Sung, you have a tubular nib that goes around that black thing that is the feed. And this was made because it was good, it was adapted for that pen that had a hood. It let them save some money in their gold that they used because they could make more nibs out of the same piece of, of gold because they are much smaller. But again, does that matter? I don't think so. If the pen writes well, why do you need the construction to be the same? Again, some people will look at a Volkswagen New Beetle and say that the Volkswagen New Beetle is not the Volkswagen the old Beetle. Yes, it is not because it is a different pen, although it has the same name. I think it's the same thing. Some people say this is not a real Parker 51. I, we may think differently, we may think it is not, but actually it is the brand that owns the name Parker that says this is a Parker 51, so I don't think we can say that. And I wonder how many people, when Parker had the Parker Vacuumatic and they started making the Aerometric, how many people said mm, that Aerometric is not the same Parker as it used to be. They shouldn't be called it a 51. Maybe that happened also. So I don't find that the tubular nib is that needed. Also, many pens that had the same kind of design and used the same kind of small hooded nibs did not have uh, tubular nibs. And I have the example of the Parker 21. And you can have examples that write really well. You have the Aurora 88, which doesn't have a tubular nib also. You can have the Lamy 2000 that doesn't have a tubular nib and you also have the Parker 100. For me, the most interesting revival of the Parker 51 ever made. Much more interesting than this one, for sure. I would exchange one of these for one of those every time. It didn't have a tubular nib. So, that's what it is. And there is another thing. When you look at the shape of the feed of this pen, it will remind us of the nib of the feed and nib of a Parker Jotter, that exposed part. I don't know this for sure. This is just my speculation. But I think maybe the Parker 51, Parker, new Parker 51 nib is the same nib as the Parker Jotter. And some people are questioning about that. So I'm buying a pen that is much more expensive than a simple Parker Jotter with the same kind of nib. Actually, this is gold nib, but it can be a steel nib. Is that really a problem? The nib is like this. If I was in the place of Parker, if I had to make a new pen, I would go for a new nib that I already had if I could do it. And I think you can put such a nib inside this pen. And, again, this happens in other brands, and I don't see the, that kind of complaint. In Lamy, for example, we have the Lamy Safari, that have, or the Lamy ABC, which is even less expensive, that has the exact same nib, but one is steel, another one is gold, the same exact nib as the Dialog, that is much more expensive, it's more expensive than this one. So, it is the same nib. I don't see really a big problem with that. What matters is the performance and the casing of the pen, if we like it or not. I don't know if what we don't see in a pen is that, what we don't see or don't feel is that important in a pen. It also happens in some other pens which I find very interesting is the very expensive Parker Premier with this nib has the same nib 
as the older and very cheap Waterman Kultur. Yes, I've removed both nibs. They are exactly the same and you can even exchange them between pens. They just have different engravings and one is made of gold and another one is made of steel. So I think that works also. So again, I think the, then that no modern reincarnation of the Parker 51 will ever please most of the old users of the Parker 51. Actually, no other version ever did. The Parker 51 2002 version limited edition was not a success at all. People said all the same stuff they're saying about this, it's not the same pen inside, it's different, the nib is not tubular, and so it is a cartridge converter pen, and so on. And the same happened with the Parker 100 that did not intend to copy the Parker 51, but it was like a close inspiration in design with several parts that are relating directly with the uh, similar parts with the Parker 51, and people said, ah, no, that's not the real Parker 51. It's not, it is Parker 100, but that's not the matter. I don't think the older users will ever be pleased with the new, most of them will never be pleased with a new Parker 51, but with the older ones. I don't think there's a way out of that. I think Parker really created this pen, otherwise they would have put the push fit system and some other characteristics, I think they aimed the newer users and not the previous users of a Parker 51. And as I said, maybe they have, they have information about new users preferring to screw fit caps instead of the push fit caps. And some argument that I hear sometimes is people saying, ah, but there are lots of older Parker 51 pens available and they are quite inexpensive. Yes, that may be true, but after you get one, you may need to get it repaired, cleaned and so on. If you want one in a very good condition, it will be expensive and it is a used pen. Some people don't like to use used pens and also they are not under any warranty and that may be important for some users and I can understand that. So if we want a real, let's call it a real old Parker 51, you may choose one of the many variations of the old Parker 51. If you want a new Parker 51, be sure that is a different pen. So I think this is quite logical that they did this pen after all because there are many brands and like this that have emulated, not this one, sorry, but we have uh, talking about Hero, Ving Sung, Jin Hao that emulated the Parker 51 design and the Parker, even the Aurora, and only the Parker didn't have a Parker that was a Parker 51 kind of. And nowadays you only you even have the very close, very similar Jin Hao 85 that is similar to this new version and not with the older version with also a screw cap. So overall what I can say it is a very nice pen with a cartridge converter system which is my favorite. Uh, I would prefer it to be available as a push fit cap and not a screw fit cap and I also think that the kind of design of this pen should have been based in the Parker Sonnet kind of design, but a little fatter and with a hooded nib. But I like this way more. But this was the decision they made. I would prefer that way. I also love the colors available. Although one of the most desirable ones, the plum, is only available in gold nib. And that makes that more expensive. And why would you pay more for a gold nibbed pen? That is a problem. You sh there's no, no really justification to buy a more expensive pen for a gold nib, unless you really say, no, I only like gold nib pens, that's another thing, but you will not use anything of the flex or anything of the gold because the tip of the hood is very close, so you don't have room to flex it. And I have to say that I don't like the nib uh, 
diversity that is available, which is F's and M's only. About size comparison, we have here the Parker Duf Centennial Dufold and the Lamy Safari, and when we uncap all the pens, they are of similar size, as you can see, and the Parker 50, sorry, out of camera, they are kind of similar size, the Parker 51 is a little smaller, but if you post it and this pen is good to be posted, you see it is much wider, much bigger. About the, you may say it, it's not that wider, but it's not that thinner than the Parker Dufold grip section, and it is a very nice width to hold the, the pen. Now, let's go for the writing sample. And here we have the pen and paper, and let me show you. So, this is the Parker 51 Deluxe Gold Trim. It has a fine gold nib, ah, and it is black, of course. And we have the paper, which is the Rhodia dot pad and the ink is some Parker vintage Parker Quink black and this pen is really perfect on the paper it has almost no feedback I like the, the way it writes a lot although I even like a little bit more of feedback but it is normal about the width of the pen, I have to say that the nib is a little bit, you can say it is maybe a little fat for a fine nib, but it is quite normal in Parker nibs. I have here a Parker Centennial Lufold with a fine nib, and you can see it is comparable. So it is the regular Parker F nib, which may be a little bit broad for some people. About the writing, it writes really well, it doesn't skip, it is very very well tuned, very smooth and you just get to be, get used to hold the pen in the right angle because you don't really see the tip that well. This is the line, you can try to force it a little bit and it will open a little bit more and the line will be thicker but not much and regarding the reverse writing it is a little scratchy not much it's not pleasant but you can use it if you want to have an extra fine line about the wetness of the nib it is quite wet i think it is very well tuned and as i say about some pens this is a writer's pen i really think it is nice one i would not pay the full price for a gold one, but some colors are only available in gold nibs and the gold caps are only available with gold nibs, so they are more expensive. The, the other ones, I think, have better price. I think this is a very nice edition, much better than I thought. I would prefer a cap that was not a screw fit cap, but these are my thoughts. I tried to be as objective as I could and I received this pen very recently, but I've been using it every day since I received it and I'm writing with it and drawing with it a lot to be able to provide you a fair review. So, this is all I have to show you. I have to thank you to Joost Appleboom for sending me this pen for review and I have to thank you all for watching for such long videos. And I will see you next time. Bye!